Hey everyone, welcome back. It's another special edition of the Pick 6 from NFL Network Studios. Our guest today is Lance Zerline. He's an expert. He's going to answer your questions. This is a fun time of year for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's uh, all the hard work. I do all the draft profiles. Mm -hmm. So this is the time we get to do the fun stuff instead of the grinding of the yeah. tape. All right, so we got some fan questions. Some okay. of them pertain to the draft, some of them don't. Sure. Ready for this? Yeah. All right, here we go. Question number one from Kyle in Everett, Minnesota. Do offensive linemen tend to be safer first round picks than other positions? If so, why? I think historically uh, they have been because offensive linemen are kind of what you see is what you get when you watch tape. And so with offensive linemen, you a lot of times you'll see the physical things that you need to see. You'll see the areas, the techniques and things that need to be cleaned up. Um, the guys who are doing the drafting a lot of times will know what can be coached and what are physical issues that are not likely to be you know, updated and upgraded through coaching. So I don't know that it's necessarily, I think it's higher than many of the positions, like quarterbacks, for example, and a lot of times wide receivers. Um, I don't know if it's the safest, but I think it, it can be one of the safer positions if you know how to evaluate. All right, let's uh, stick with the offensive line here for okay. question number two from Charles in Brazil. Lots of talk of moving Riley Reef to guard. Mm -hmm played left tackle for us the last couple of seasons. Why not just draft a guard to avoid the risk of having a player switch positions? Number one, it would be if you think Riley is not, is maybe losing a step in terms of how he is protecting the quarterback. If, if you just say, look, we've been getting by his physical dimensions or something, we wanted to move to guard previously, we may look to do that now and draft a, a tackle because you think the tackles are better than the guards. And you know Riley could move inside and do a really good job inside at guard. So that would be one of the reasons. But I've got no problem with the, the Vikings sitting still, keeping a veteran out there at that tackle spot and drafting a guard. And I, I think that more than anything is, is more likely, uh, more than likely what will happen. But it wouldn't shock me because of the depth of tackles at that number 18 spot that they could go in that direction. Yeah, all right, question number three from Larry in Blaine, Minnesota. Is Khalil Mack good enough to single-handedly influence draft strategy? Without question. There are certain players, the transcendent players, um, and I do believe that he's got a chance to be one. I think J.J. Watt in his prime, I think Khalil Mack right now. Those are guys, when you have great pass rushers, you have to account for great pass rushers. Same way when you have a great quarterback, you've got to draft uh, pass rushers and you've got to draft cornerbacks to be able to slow down those great quarterbacks. So yeah, without question, Khalil Mack can make you um, alter your draft strategy because you have to account for him. Hey, the Green Bay Packers went out and got a couple edge rushers this offseason. Sure. You have Matt Patricia with the Lions. So well, you got to stop them too. I mean, yeah, yeah. stop them or copy them. Yeah, that's right. One or the so other. Aside from just Khalil Mack, other good edge rushers in this division sure. as well. Okay, question number four. Are there any teams, this is from Lynn and Fargo, are there any teams behind us in the first round who may want to trade up so we can potentially get a couple of starters early in the draft? You know, that's tough to know. We can only guess. I know that when you look for trade-up partners, you've got to find someone who covets a, a player or a position and they're willing to jump up there because they're worried that that player or that position is going to be gone. So, you know, one of the teams that comes to mind is is the New England Patriots and they don't typically like to do a lot of trading up. They usually trade back, but they've got so much draft capital and now with Rob Gronkowski retiring, if Noah Fant, for example, were to fall to the number 18 spot, that could be a team that could come up to number 18 and you could see the Vikings move all the way back to 32. Yeah, I think you said a draft capital. You gotta find the teams that have the picks to do it. Yeah, you don't have who are the willing to, to do it. It yeah. doesn't matter how badly sure. you wanna get up there. Well, you unless you're in New Orleans last year with, with Marcus Davenport and they yeah. gave up a ton to get up Two there. Two ones, so yeah. It mm -hmm. could, you could still find someone who wants it badly enough. All right, question number five, Wiley in Brownsburg, Indiana. What's the harm in drafting a quarterback every two to three years just to take a chance? I don't think there is one. Maybe every two years might be a little much, but every three years, if you're able to develop them even just a little bit, a lot of times where they get in games and, and they show something, their value skyrockets. And we've seen the New England Patriots have been able to take players, they develop them, and then they turn them over and move them. I think the idea was to develop them in case Tom Brady ever shut it down, but he's going on forever and ever. So if you know what you're doing from an evaluation standpoint, a lot of times the lack of tape can also create a little intrigue in the player where, where teams want them to be really good and they're willing to give you a little bit more for them when they don't love the draft that they have in, that's in their face. So I don't think there's anything wrong with taking quarterbacks in, 
and uh, and potentially it's like flipping a house. You, yeah. You get them at a fourth round, and all of a sudden you try to get a second round. That's a good them. investment. That's yeah. right. Okay, final question. We step away from the draft a little bit, but okay. I think you'll appreciate this one because you care about the league. Will the NFL, Greg from Santa Clara asks, will the NFL ever go to full-time officials? Yeah, I think that will um, happen. We saw recently with replay, the changes in replays. I think the league wants to get it right, and the best way to get it right, in my opinion, is to make sure that you shore up as many areas as possible. And if full-time officiating, if that meant that the officiating was more consistent, then I don't see why the league wouldn't eventually go to it. What the timeline would look like, I don't know, but I think that is something the league would consider sure. This edition of the Pick 6 is over. Thanks for your help, Lance. Great Appreciate job. It. Thank you. All right, submit your questions to the email address at the bottom of the screen. Maybe we'll see you in next week's Pick 6.